Hi, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Use Soundbites to Get More Publicity. I'm Jess Toddfeld. In a little while, Dan Janelle is going to introduce me, but I always love to talk right to you and open with something big. So this is actually the replay, but I do a recording of the replay where it's a little bit tighter and faster as a benefit. And that's what all of you are getting if you're watching this right now. So I like to open with something big. Here it is. Sound bites are not just snappy little phrases that you say in an interview and a reporter or somebody who's interviewing you says, nice. It's not just that, it's way more than that. It can actually help you get more publicity. So in the story, when you craft them in advance, meaning I'm going to show you what makes a great soundbite, why we care, how to actually today, I'm gonna to show you how to actually get more of your emails opened when pitching the press and the biggest mistakes that people make. And when they open it up, they need to know this. What will you say? What will you say on the topic you're pitching? And once they know that, and they ideally like what you say, those would be the sound bites, those bites of sound out of the paragraphs that you could say because you have not gotten the interview yet. Of what you could say, what are those little answers or quotes? In print, they're called quotes. In TV and radio, they are called sound bites. So that is what we're doing. I have so much good stuff to give you today. And now we're gonna throw it over to Dan Janelle, who will give the introduction from just a little earlier. Dan. Welcome everyone, this is Dan Janelle, your fearless PR leader, your book coach, your developmental editor, and your ghost writer, and your PR expert. I'm happy to welcome you to our webinar today and bring you up to date on uh, lots of fun things going on today in, in our world. Uh, we're honored today to have Jess Toddfeld to uh, show you how you can get more publicity and how you can use sound bites to get publicity. And uh, not only am I happy to be the host of the seminar, but as they say on uh, that famous commercial, I'm also a client. Uh, I went to Jess's media training program a few years ago and sat in on with like three or four other people, which were live training. And it was great because you can learn from other people and see what their problems are and uh, how they overcome them and say, hey, I can do that too. Or I'm not the only one who thinks that they're uh, overweight or looking weird on TV and just showed me a number of ways to improve my appearance on TV as well as my sound bites. And it was really amazing to see the transformation that had occurred in everyone in our seminar as well as with me. And I was able to use those sound bites for years and years and years. So this is a seminar that keeps on giving. Uh, once you learn the tools and techniques and tactics that Jess will teach you, you'll be able to use those tools forever. So. I'm proud to introduce my friend, Jess Toddfeld. He's worked with many television stations, on television stations, so he knows that side of the business. And he's worked with many authors, speakers, coaches, and consultants, uh, and entrepreneurs, which I think covers everyone who's in the seminar today. So he knows the world we all live in and can give us real world examples that will help us get to the next level with our publicity so we can sell more books, more speeches, more consulting, more coaching, and grow our businesses. So with that, just take it away, because I'm gonna be taking notes. So I'm going offline now, off camera, so I can uh, take notes. Have a good one. Thank you, Dan Janelle. Yes, I have so much good stuff to share with everybody today. I don't wanna waste any time. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna share my screen and show a couple of cool things. And one of them is the fact that you can use sound bites to get more publicity. Now I want you, I'm gonna give you some techniques for crafting some sound, sound bites, but also hooks and headlines for your emails. It's the whole package. In fact, I'm gonna begin with the end in mind. So what do I think the end game is for me when I go out and I do press? The biggest piece is social proof. I want those logos that you see on there. I want to be able to put that on my screen so that I can, people can look at it and say, all right, he must have this third party credibility. You can do that too. In fact, when, not if, but when you get the big interviews, you have to remember to put it on your website and your marketing materials and all of it. Yes, I said a Guinness record, and uh, there it is up close, and actually it's right behind me, very small over here, which was 
112 interviews in 24 hours. Um, that was on radio. So looking back over there, and it was uh, exciting, and I enjoyed doing it. But here's what people asked me. They said, how did you do it? How did you get that many outlets to say yes? That's what I want to show you today. And I want to show you how these sound bites and the quotes play into it and get them to say yes faster. So here's what I want to share with you as I come out in and out of that full screen mode. Yes, you saw that. How did I get into, and this was another test that I did. How did I get into almost 50 newspapers? I'm gonna show it to you so that you can recreate it. All right, so where do we go from here? We need to know what you want. This is the starting place. You know, Stephen Covey said you gotta begin with the end in mind. What do you want as a result of interviews? So I said one of the things that I want is social proof, proof from other people in the masses that I'm the real deal. That also comes in the form of client and customer reviews and logos and all of that. But I know I want more and I think you do too. And it may be sales, it may be web traffic, it may be clicks, it may be people showing up in an event. We have to begin with the end in mind. We have to know what it is that they that we want people to do so we can say it in the interview. But Jess, I'm still the pitching part of this whole equation. That's okay. You still need to know what you want. And because you're watching this on the replay, you can hit pause and maybe write it down. If you're not sure if you're like, oh yeah, where am I? Well, what do I ultimately want with this? All right, let's keep it moving. I have a secret for you. It's not a personal secret, it's a media secret. And the secret is this. They need your help and they need it badly. The media, when people are like, well, I know I'm throwing this stuff out there and I don't know if they love me and all that stuff. They have an insatiable need for content. They need your help and they need content badly. Good news, you have some of it. So don't despair, don't feel bad about yourself. If they don't reply, I'm gonna talk about that today, that you send an email out and they don't pro reply and there are a bunch of reasons probably you're doing it like everybody else. Don't be like everybody else. Stand out, don't fit in, especially when it comes to pitching the media. Here's a little case study for you, a little something I tried out. A couple of years ago, I was speaking at an event called the Media Lab here in New York. It was put on by the National Speakers Association, NSA for short, and I was being a little sneaky in my subject line, as you see on your screen, and if you need to maximize this, by the way, uh, somewhere probably in the lower right-hand corner of this video box is a little square and you click it and it'll make this whole thing full screen. So the subject line is the most important part. Because they won't open it, they'll never see your pitch and they'll never get to those sound bites if you don't have an amazing subject line. So here's a little jest trick, RE in reference to, that's what it means in reference to, not that we're going back and forth in emails. I have used this for the last 15 years and only two times has somebody called me on it. One time was during the push to get that Guinness record and the person said, hey, it's a little sneaky that you use that, but ah, I'll book you anyway, I don't care. So, you know, and the other person was like, mm, what's that about? But they were probably cranky in their whole life anyway. So this says the next Dr. Phil, and if you look further down, the big hook, the big grabber is who will be the next Dr. Phil or Judge Judy, I mean the next big thing. And then parentheses, NSA story pitch, what? The people who listen in on us? No, they turn, turns out it's the people who speak to you. So in there, here's what you have to do. You have to have a strong subject line. You have to say, hi, first name. Now I'm using one of those mass email programs. Uh, the one I use is called Your Mailing List Provider. You may use MailChimp or Goat or uh, whatever one it is. Uh, Constant Contact, doesn't matter. You must address it to a person. So you must figure out, you can't just say, hi, editors. That's what I used to get when I was a producer, and it would annoy me. I'm not an editor. And I would say, this is a mass email. It's spam delete. That's what's happening to your emails. Don't be that person. And then you want to quickly get to the point. We need to see the headline. So this says, who will be the next Dr. Phil or Judge Judy? And as I scroll here, then there are bullet points underneath. 
And in this case, I gave bullet points of what they'd expect for the, the purpose of today's webinar and most of your pitches, that's where you're giving bullet points on what you would say. What will you say during this interview? All right, so uh, what I, I actually only sent it out right before giving this speech, two days before. I didn't give myself much uh, chance here because I was talking about how you could use sound bites to get more press. This one reporter showed up from um, the New York Times. Yes. And it was to my smallest list, which was about 150 um, people, uh, news people, that is. And uh, I was just fine with that. I was okay. Usually, I send it out to a bigger list of about 6,000. So this is what happened. And I got this story, training for would-be stars and how to be famous. Fantastic, because what I do, my job is, uh, my business, is I'm a media trainer and presentation trainer. Uh, the way I really describe what I talk about is that I help people who want to be magnetic communicators, who want to draw in more of what they want, whether it's through media or on a stage or sales presentations, I help them to become magnetic communicators. So we got this great press clipping that's actually behind me over there, and I was pretty excited. And that was the smallest part of the list. So what stories do they want? So we have to know, but Jess, I just want to know the list of what, are, what makes a good sound bite. I have to back up into it because if I just tell you, it's not going to help you because you're going to send your email out wrong. You're going to pitch the media wrong. Um, if you're a publicist, we, I know we have a number of publicists tuning in today. Listen closely. Why not? Uh, listen to someone who was on the receiving end of pitches for, let's see, I was a producer for 13 years. And I booked and produced at that time over 6,000 segments. You can, on national television, you can imagine how many did not make it through. And I was the gatekeeper, I'm one of the gatekeepers. So what do they want? Something that matches their audience, maybe something topical or seasonal, event or time driven. Uh, you wanna have it be news tie in, news you can use, something surprising. You know, what's different? What would they be interested to hear that you have to say that nobody else is saying as I take a little sip here? Local wants something local and stories where the journalism or work is done for them. So that means the more you help them, where you give them facts and photographs and access to people or whatever it is, they're gonna love you. Okay, so it's important to know what do they want? Are you not doing one of those. Most, a lot of people just take a press release, they write this big long blocks of text and it goes on and on and they just say, here you go, you don't know what the story is, but neither do I, good luck with it. And it doesn't work. So that's what they want. Here's what they don't want, having said that. Something too self-serving. A press release with no what's in it for them. And I just wanna take a second here. I said that just sending out press releases. When I was a producer, I got one once for a restaurant in uh, New Mexico. And I looked at it and I was in New York and I said, uh, I, I said to the person, that I, I called them up just because I was curious. And I said, I got your press release. Are you looking to do a, a, a food segment? We do cooking segments. No, no, it's just, we're releasing it. You're releasing it. Yep. We sent it out there like doves. It's why, why do people do that? It was like, so I said, well, what are, you, what are you hoping will happen? I don't know, you talk about it on my show. So it was, it was a big mess. Um, if it doesn't match their outfit, if it's confusing, if you just send a big press release, confusing. Bounce it off somebody else for that reason. And next is if it's with somebody who seems flaky, show it to somebody that's all sorts of mistakes and spelling and you know, other weird errors. Uh, if it seems like it's too difficult, or it requires too much work for that person, they're not gonna say yes. And this is very important. If you don't get a yes or no, and they're not gonna do it. And that seems like something that you'd say, yeah, sure, I get that, Jess. No, no, no. You may send it out and you say, oh, I didn't hear back, so I guess they, didn't, they don't love me, right? But it's not that. It's not that, oh, hey, they don't love you. It's maybe they didn't open it. How would you know? So if you use one of those mass big email programs, it, it will give you the analytics. Look, see who opened it, who didn't. See what your open rate is. 
And if you're doing a one-to-one, -one, you want to use one of those services that can tell you if you got an, an open. And there are a couple of different ones. One is called Yesware, and another one is called Mixmax. And you can do Google search and find out about them. And the other person doesn't know, but you get a read receipt and you find out. So that's what they do want, what they don't want. Ultimately, it's this, be relevant, be easy to work with, return their calls and emails, and use sound bites in your pitches. And that's what we're getting to, we're moving toward, because you need to have great answers for them to say, I love the topic, oh, and I love even more what this person is going to say about it. All right, how do I find my ideas? I'm gonna show you how we do a little fishing for ideas and we're gonna even find some media hooks. We're gonna grab some hooks. Here's where we go. News.google.com, news.google.com. And here you go. And then it's, you're gonna ultimately create your hook or your headline, your question that you're gonna share with them. So I look around, I look for mm, patterns and I see what makes a great headline. What, how can I speak? media language, which is they like that short headline. It's a soundbite basically, but they write the headlines. But if you pitch them with your soundbite, your headline, they're gonna say, I got it. So on the side here, I see three tips for building courage and resilience from a Navy SEAL. So they love top three, top 10, top five lists. They, uh, it, it, something from your background. We're getting closer here. So let's keep it going here. I recently spoke to a group of estate planning attorneys. And here's what I'm gonna show you. I did a search on their term, but this is how you're going to be able to create media hooks right now. So take out a piece of paper because I want you to have it done by the time you're done watching this. So I searched for estate planning and what did I say? Steer clear of the eight biggest estate plan mistakes. Here's your hook, you ready? Steer clear of the eight biggest blank mistakes. What's your blank? Fill that in there. Steer clear of the eight biggest blank mistakes. What mistakes do you help people navigate through and avoid? Fill it in. Estate planning week. Is there a week dedicated to something that you do? I see one further down. Avoid the headaches of blank. We'll get rid of estate planning. Put your topic in there. What are the headaches? Now, in that email, now we know what the headline is. And again, I have to tell you this because I want you to be successful. I want you to reap the benefits of what I learned when I set that Guinness record. And I want you to send your email out the right way. So under that, we have bullet points of what you would say, and it needs to be exciting. It needs to be focused in. You need to own your words and use absolutes. That's one of the methods. Write down absolutes. We need to speak in absolutes. All right, instead of you might wanna do this, no, this must be done by this date. Or if people don't do this, this other thing will happen. And that's a prediction quote. All right, let's keep it going. Women cautioned on estate planning. How about you replace it with a group you help? Millennials cautioned on blank. Or seniors cautioned on blank. Married people cautioned, single people cautioned on blank. You name it. And if you see up down at the bottom there, avoid common mistakes. And so sometimes people ask me when I deliver this uh, talk at a conference or um, I'm uh, in front of people and delivering this in some way, they will say, but it seems like we're going for the negative. As human beings, we want to do two things. We want to avoid pain and seek pleasure. And do you know what the biggest of those two are? Avoid pain or seek pleasure? Avoid pain. That's right, that's what we wanna do. Uh, let's see here, estate planning 101, what's your version of 101? All right, I uh, also spoke in front of some people who happen to be uh, public speaking uh, professionals and they were, wanted to, uh, they were people who do something like me. So actually I help people to speak better in front of the media and get more media attention and then on the speaking side, give speeches and sales presentations. So there were some people like that in the room. The 10 biggest public speaking mistakes that successful people don't make. What are the 10 biggest blank mistakes that successful people who you help don't make, right? We'll look down a little further, nail your next blank, whatever it is, with these three tips. 
By the way, I hate the word tips. Hate it, I will never ever give you tips in any of my content. Strategies, strategies are like, yeah, give me the strategy. Tips are like throwaways, like, oh, what a nice little tip. Nah, I, I will not follow through on that. So that's a just thing. All right, so let's keep it going. Um, how to, let's see, uh, public speaking tips, three things that I learned. For you, what are the three things that you learned? Down at the bottom, Forbes had a story, what entrepreneurs can learn about blank. You can do what blank group can learn about blank. All right, and um, we're gonna jump past those. So you get the idea, ultimately it's this. Giving a list will help you get through faster. Five ways you can blank. Hit those pain points. This mistake could cost you a how X number of dollars. Big, or uh, break some myths. I bet there's some myths that you know that are moving around your head. The media not only wants to know that it's a myth and that you're allowing them to realize, but they wanna know what you will say. And when you say it, say something surprising. And use words with emotion and action. Those are two more soundbite elements that make a great soundbite. And ultimately take a point of view. All right, so uh, I wanna just take a quick moment here because today this is called Sound Bites, How to Get More Publicity. Um, yes, I'm not gonna disappoint you with a special offer today. So I'm gonna tell you about it very quickly and I'm gonna show you actual emails that came to me when I was a producer. I have changed the names to protect the innocent. Um, so that was nice of me to do that. <laughs> All right, it is the Soundbite mini course. Jess, you're showing me and say yes, but I'm gonna show you how I go even de deeper and give you cool stuff. So actually over at mediareadyand30.com slash soundbites, you're gonna get something at the lowest price I've ever done, probably ever. Um, I, you know, I guess in selling a book would be a tiny bit less, but uh, it's gonna be one of the best prices ever. If you go to that webpage, I'm just gonna give you a little walkthrough right now. When you go over there, you're gonna see a, a video walkthrough of what you can expect, but this is, this is what to expect, which is this little soundbite mini course, you're gonna get the digital version of Media Secrets, which means you're gonna be out there, you need to get media ready. This international number one bestseller will help you. Then the next thing that you're gonna be able to get are videos, as you see over here, these four videos. Um, basically, you're going to be able to do the whole thing in 30 minutes for the video portion, which is getting those sound bites down and getting it out. And today I'm showing you how to do the pitch. So between the two, you're gonna be there fast. I want you to have stuff done. I'm also gonna give you a 20 minute audio called the Media Training Quick Start. So if you don't have time to read a whole book, listen to the video, it's an audio, I'm sorry, in 20 minutes, I actually have it in both formats. Um, and you can listen to it and say, now I know what to do to ace my interview. So you're gonna get that and uh, a, a way to be able to get uh, a couple other things, but here it is. It's worth a million dollars and that's what you should put in at the very end uh, when you go to that webpage. No, actually, um, I just love it when people put the price up and they draw a line through it. And I just wanna be able to do that today. Yep. Uh, but I really think it's worth a lot. My mother would say that it's worth a million dollars, but she, she loves me more than anybody. Maybe my wife. Okay, $49. Maybe my kids, but um, anyway, it's a competition. I do have my number one dad mug today. Uh, wait, it says spectacular dad. Number one dad was taken. Anyway, so um, go over there, check that out. And I'm gonna get real specific here. Um, and I'm gonna do something special today where, here's the deal. This is the replay. So the first 20 people who signed up, got, and I'm gonna put that website on there, first 20 people signed up, got 50 of my personal media contacts. And it's basically this, uh, Associated Press, the LA Times, uh, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, uh, USA Today, uh, CBS, CNN. Um, these are emails and their phone numbers in there some, and their titles and the rest of it. And 50 of them will go to the list of 50, goes to the first 20 people who now sign up after listening to the replay. Will you be the first 20? We will see. So you better jump on it if you're listening right now. All right, so that website, one more time, is somewhere around here. Uh, and it is uh, 
media ready in 30 and it's dot com slash there it is sound bites with an s on the end all right let's jump back in i'm going to show you some pitches that came through to me and mistakes that people made and i'm just uh going back to go in order and right now i have a case study that i want to share with you that you're going to love because it's about a new york politician that we're so proud of uh you know i'm from new york here you see that the um, fake window that I have behind me over here. What, Jess, our mind is blowing. We love the way that looked. That one is fake. All this stuff is, is real. That's a camera. Anyway, here he is, Anthony Weiner. We're so proud of how he became so famous. And you may remember a few years ago, he decided to become a um, photographer. Yep, that's right. And um, did a lot of selfies, a lot of work in the selfie space. And uh, they were writing stories about him. So a few people said to me, hey, Jess, are you going to go out and talk about it? And I thought, well, I, I don't really know if I need to be associated with him. I don't really think about Then I thought about it again and said, ah, career opportunity. Let's do this. So here's what happened. I sent out an email with bullet points of what I'd say. So first, actually, let's look at the subject line, RE in reference to. And I promise you this was an unintended pun, I swear. I didn't know until I started saying this in front of audiences and groups. Um, Wiener fallout, it was the fallout of this whole problem. He was in the news every day. Um, media consultant available. Uh, if I had done it today, I would have said available. Um, and then I say, hi, first name code, and they put Mike's name in there. If you're looking for a media consultant to provide quotes on the representative story, uh, Wiener story, let me know. Here are a few things I would say. And I put the sound bites, the quotes, in print they're called quotes. In TV and radio they're called sound bites. It's that bite of sound, that, that answer. What is your answer? This is the answer out of all that I, on the, as we scroll down a little further, the one that went all over, the one that got me a, a ridiculous amount of attention. Here it is. Can he repair his image? I'm gonna break it down for you. I'm gonna tell you some of the uh, elements that made it great. Can he repair his image is a rhetorical question that will help get you quoted. He can never, it's an absolute, I talked about absolutes, never truly get past the story. He is mortally wounded. Ooh, bold action oriented words, his political career, but it doesn't mean he can't star on a reality show or host a program on CNN. And that was a conflict quote, a little pop culture reference and a little jab at those networks at the time that had, took someone who had a sex scandal, and it was um, Elliot Spitzer at the time. They gave him a show. Nowadays, things have changed. Now they take the show away from you. A uh, shout out to Matt Lauer. All right. So this had a number of the elements in it. You don't need every element in it. And there are more, and I'll be sharing them with you. But when you put it in here and you put it in the answer, basically many of them called up and said to me, can you just say that? So here's what happened next. What happened next was, all of a sudden, Washington Post. We want to say some of those things that you said in the email. Washington Times. Philadelphia Inquirer, and I didn't know this, but they actually syndicate their material, and boom, it went to 15 more newspapers. And as it started to show up in a number of places, Forbes.com, Vancouver Sun, and Financial Times, Atlantic, uh, Dallas News, I realized that was one email. Here's a, a little Jess secret. I took the original email with high first name code and I pushed it down a little bit, like three or four uh, times of hitting the enter key. And I wrote, wasn't sure if you saw this the other day, does this story work for you? As if I'm just sending it back out to them. And uh, another 20 or so ended up saying, yo, I'm sorry, I, you know, I missed that. Oh, let me see this story. Yeah, yeah, let's do something. Ended up with almost 50 articles. You can do this too. And I also want your antenna to be up because what happened was they ended up putting some amazing quotes and you have to find those social proof quotes. The, the Washington Post said, Jess Todfield is a media training expert. I will use that forever. I'll use it in int introductions and put it on the backs of books and that I write and put it all over. The Washington Times, they said, <coughs> the public re relations mavens way in Jess Todfeld says, how can I use that in my own marketing? This is what you need to be looking for. So 
you know, I didn't want to just talk about one little thing. I really wanted to share with you how I see the whole picture. So the sound bites are this one piece. It's like looking at the thumb and thinking like, that's a whole body. No, it's this one piece of this equation and I'm trying to give you as much of it as possible. So we're gonna get into uh, pitches and don't forget the first 20 people who go to mediareadyin30.com, number 30, slash sound bites plural, will get, I'm gonna, I'm, they're gonna get 50. All right, I'm gonna make it one better. I'm gonna give it, I'm, and I'm boxing myself into it. I'm gonna give you 100 media contacts for you to pitch. So when you're making this pitch that we're about to talk about uh, any second, you're gonna have 100 media contacts, so you better get on it. Um, I apologize if you're not one of the first 20, um, but go take a look. And all right, so here we go. A lot of times people just lob something out there and it's like throwing spaghetti at a ceiling, which by the way, if you're the teenage me growing up, it's a whole lot of fun to throw spaghetti at a ceiling, um, but adults don't like it. All right, and I hope my kids aren't tuning in right now. So if this press release looks blurry to you, it's on purpose because that's what it looks like to them when you send out a press release. It's just blocks and blocks of text that they have to figure out and it goes on and on. And what's the story? What's the headline? What will this person say? None of that is in that type of press release. Now, press releases are fine for search engine optimization and you maybe put on your website. I'm telling you from being on the receiving end, you don't need it. Now, in that email, I'm gonna show you where you can put at the bottom some of those blocks of text. If they want more information, great, they'll scroll down. But they need to know the who, what, when, where, why, and how. What is this story? Who is available? Uh, what will they say? When is this going to happen? Or meaning, when are you available? Any of those things, who, what, when, where, why, and how. Here's some emails that did not work. And I want you to see this because it's so important. Subject line, is the US headed for similar merger with Canada and Mexico? Huh? Sim what? Similar to what? What? Uh, did we merge? What's going on? And then that first Eiffel that shows up in the preview often, when you get a little preview of your email, says for immediate release. For immediate release, everybody. We have something to tell the world. Don't put that there. Yes, we know you released it. You sent it to me. I released it like doves. I really don't do that. Here is my name and phone number. I don't care what your name and phone number is, meaning the person receiving end, until I know what the story is. And then they just slapped the press release, copy and paste, no hijacks, no, hey, here's how this would work for your program. No, here's what I'd say in an interview. Delete. Um, and this, is, this was uh, a similar one. One question not answered by the CO2, greenhouse gas, global warming, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? And blocks and blocks of tests. I don't even know. Is there a person involved? Am I even doing this story? Confusing. Delete. And this is the inside. They do the same thing for immediate release. Uh, contact information is this, and here's blocks of text. Don't be like everybody else. Same thing with this one. Uh, the AMA. Is it the American Medical Association? The American Marketing Association? Is it some other group? Uh, it could be a, a lot. And then blocks of text. Here's the press release. You, you figure it out. I am not going to figure out a good story or tell you what I'd say. Do I know what I'd say? I'm going to wait until the interview and I'm going to give mediocre answers. That's what people do. And when I was a producer, I'd have to you know, pre-interview them and walk them through. So you get the idea. Blocks of text, boring, boring. Let's show you a couple that do work. Um, this one says uh, RE for Jess, visual unique hit. Taser lost, launches a consumer handheld device. So I worked on a show and I called the person and I said, hey, um, can you tase somebody? And they did and it was hysterical with the guy's business partner. Um, so let me show you, let me jump ahead a little bit here. Um, this is the template and I'm gonna show you an even tighter version of the template. Subject line, very important. So you may remember when Tiger Woods was, uh, when he was, <laughs> His wife was chasing him with a golf club and he cheated on her and um, everyone was talking about it, except Tiger Woods, he was hiding. Available for Tiger Woods story, POV, point of view below. 
Hi, first name. Hi, Chuck. Do you need someone to talk about the Tiger Woods story today or tomorrow? P.S. Full info and point of view bullets below. That's what they need. This worked. I ended up in about 10 different outlets uh, and actually the Associated Press, which is on my, that whole file that I'm giving to the first 20 people, um, they said yes and they interviewed me for APTV and went all over the country. I don't even know how many. Uh, I wish I had the count now. And I had people calling me from different places. Somebody said, are you in Tampa? No, why are you asking? I just saw you on the news. It was fantastic. Subject line, or, or excuse me, the big headline available. You know, I probably, if I were to do it again today, I would um, craft what I think a, a more hook-like headline, but available for Tiger Woods interviews and quotes. I had sent this out because the story just broke. And you see over there, I also would have written next to my name, uh, available for interviews colon, Jess Toddfeld, right underneath, uh, media and communication consultant. And I now put a little clickable link right after my name that says bio, so they can get the bio. Put it there, let someone click to a website. Uh, and then it says Jess Toddfeld can say, and it has those, had those hooks, the, no, those, I'm sorry, sound bites. They have the sound bites. I have too much I wanna share with you today. Notice I'm owning my words, absolutes. He must apologize to his wife and his fans. He must acknowledge that he's hurt and tarnished. Ooh, hurt. Hurt is emotion and emotion in to be able to not only have them be excited about your quotes, your sound bites in the pitching stage, but then when you actually deliver. And tarnished, ooh, tarnished. There's, there's conflict and emotion in those words. That's what we want. This was for the Guinness, uh, the Guinness Press uh, push when I set the Guinness record, and it was two radio stations for that. And this one says, uh, topics will and can include, and these were the bullet points, the best way to present yourself in a job interview, the best way to present yourself at work, the best way to present yourself in networking. So they were picking which one they liked, and it worked very well. Here is the template. Take a picture with your phone. I don't have handouts with this replay, but you can take a picture with your phone or a screenshot if you know how to do that. And here's what it is. Subject line has to get them to open the email. RE in reference to hospitals save money, you might pay with your life. And this was actually a client who I worked with who was an anesthesiologist. He said a lot of hospitals were saving money on this suction cup and, and not using a brain monitor when they um, sedate you. They monitor your breathing and, this, and your heart rate, but not your brain. So that's my public service announcement for you. Here it is, here is the template. Hi, Sarah, hi, first name. Would the story below work for you? A one word question. And it makes me say, what, what is it? And, uh, Jess, oh, what, maybe I know Jess. And I call this above the line, below the line. So above the line is just something to say, hey, reaching out, does this work for you? This is actually a story pitch. Below the line, we want a nice big headline, a subhead, you know, so, uh, you know, you want you to get the idea. You put a little bit more of what that story is about. The next line would be who you are, a link to your bio, and what you would say. And you want them to be compelling quotes. So I kind of scrolled up a little bit here. And that's where we put in his compelling quotes that you might die. Having a brain monitor is a no brainer. Think about interesting answers. Take five minutes and write out answers you wish you could say. And then I want you to have, make sure to use and say them as absolutes, have some with emotion. Uh, I want you to have some conflict quotes. These are a few of the strategies. Then below that, you're gonna put the paragraphs, you could draw another line, put those paragraphs of information, and then all the way at the bottom, you're gonna put your contact information. That's when they care, that's when they'll go do something about it. So. Uh, we're going to keep it moving here. So take a picture of that and make sure, this is a weird thing. Uh, when I share some of my programs and I have different uh, programs, so you're seeing this on whatever web page uh, goes along with this, um, people who go and pitch the media forget and they don't follow the template. I'm telling you this works. Uh, when we did this live just a little bit earlier, one of the questions that we got was, um, what rate of success do you get? Well, first off, I have that Guinness record and that was 112. And yes, it took about um, six weeks to line them all up because I was going for the record. 
But um, as I have on here, uh, Fortune Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, uh, Inc. Um, I think it's uh, Investors Business Daily and the New York Times on there. Uh, here's how I uh, track it because I don't pitch myself all, all the time. I pitch myself a handful of times during the year when there's a story that warrants it. I already have a lot of social proof. I've already done a whole lot of TV, print, radio, and, uh, and now podcasts and, and the rest of it. So um, for me, when I send out an email, I look and I see that a lot of times a good open rate is about 10%. So this is why you'd wanna use one of these programs. And this is why you can send it out to them again a couple of days later or the next day, maybe even to the rest of those people or everybody, because most of them didn't even open the email, all right? And then some percentage of those people are, are opening and some percentage of those people now say, hey, I want it. So uh, my biggest list is 6,000 media outlets. And then just under that, is uh, maybe 10% open up, that's 600 people opening it up and maybe 60 people are clicking around thinking of it. Listen, if I get six interviews, I'm happy. So I play a big numbers game when I'm out there. All right, so pure secret weapons session here. It's a working session because I want you writing down some of those hooks, some of your own sound bites, and you should definitely go over to mediaready30.com slash sound bites. And again, the first 20 people are going to get my media, uh, not my whole media list, but you're gonna get killer contacts that are national contacts <clears throat> that I just put together. I went through and they're nice new ones. They should all work just fine because um, people leave their jobs. And, uh, and so you're gonna get that. There's always some bounce back if somebody goes on a, a trip. Uh, but instead of the 50 I was going to do, now you're getting 100. So if a couple don't work, you're, you're in good shape. So what actually happens very quickly before I show you a couple other things, um, when you go over to this program, you're going to, you're going to get those four videos and you can do this in 30 minutes. In 30 minutes, the, the first video that you see in the upper left there it's the 22 minute lesson where I go really deep into, I'm gonna show you videos of people giving sound bites using one of the 14 strategies that I walk you through and say, here it is in an interview. And one of the other videos just below it, I say, and here it is in today's newspaper. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna go live. I'm gonna open up my web browser, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and I'm going to show you some of the elements that you can use in today's uh, news. So you also have on there a couple, just two other videos, which are basically trying to get you to take five minutes to write these down. My whole goal is for you to have stuff done. So if you're looking to pitch the media and you want to have better success rate, you need to know this stuff. And also included with it, because I want you to be great when you show up, is a download of my book, Media Secrets, a media training crash course. It was a number one international bestseller for countries. And if you don't have the time to read it, yes, you can go. Oh, I thought I had it. If we scroll down here, if you go, you can, you're going to get a 20 minute quick start. All great products come with a quick start. So you're going to get a 20 minute audio that you can just listen to and say, now I know what to do to ace my interview. All right. Uh, and again, over on the website, it's worth a million dollars. I just love to be that person crossing out. Uh, it's, we're doing it for $49. I never have products that low. Usually the entry point is uh, $9.97 um, it, for products I have online, $14.97, uh, meaning you know, uh, $1,497. I wanted to make the barrier of entry small and it's a 30 day money back guarantee. So I want you to go in there and I want you to check it out and say, okay, um, I can go do this and be able to do it. So I want to make it easy on you. And then there's an option. It's actually, this is one module taken from my bigger course, which is called Media Ready in 30 Days or Less. And you actually have an option to get that at half price, um, at least for the next few days you do. Uh, and I guess I'll show you a few of the other contacts in here. So the contact list that I'm going to send out, you see on there, uh, the Wall Street Journal, LA Times, USA Today, New York Times, Washington Post, CBS, CNN, 
um, CBS, let's see, it's so, uh, Chicago Tribune. You know, there's more than one person who works at these places. Uh, Bloomberg, uh, I handpicked all of those. And I did a search, if you see on the right, for people who handle general news, general news, national news, local news, these are people who you can reach out to. Um, and, and these are the people on there. So uh, Tampa Bay Times, uh, I purposely made sure you had a nice little mix there. CNN, you have a lot. Okay, so let me bring you back and I wanna show you a couple other uh, interesting things here. Actual emails that came to me. Uh, let's see if I have a couple other ones. Uh, well, I showed you that one, but I'm gonna show you another one that worked. And this was for a friend of mine. Subject line, he's a memory expert. Thought this memory expert would be good at radio. And these days I would go shorter on the above the line, and then we had a little bit below, and I would get quicker to the headline. And you saw the template that works. This is that template. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna go live for a second here and take it out of this mode. And let's see what we have here. Um, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna share my whole screen here for you. And we're gonna look at, let's see here, share screen, there we go. All right, so I went to the Google News as I like to, and I was looking through stories today and looking for something where we wanna find quotes, people being quoted saying something, all right? And this one looked like it was fun. Uh, Tyson recalls 36,000 pounds of chicken nuggets after complaints about rubber in their product. Yikes. I knew they tasted rubbery, um, but my kids still want to eat them. They like it anyway. So here's what we're looking for. People being quoted and some of these soundbite elements, so the quote elements that you can um, uh, model. So here we go. I mentioned emotion. We care deeply about the consumers that buy our products and trust, who trust emotion also to provide their families safe, high quality food. Wow, okay. Um, this next one, having two recalls in a short period of time is not what customers expect of us, what we expect of ourselves. So this would be what I call facts or details. That's an easy one as far as delivering a quote or a sound bite. And yes, some of them get chosen, but you want the real exciting ones to be chosen. Uh, I'm gonna show you another one. Uh, I was scrolling through here and I just clicked so that we could uh, make it a little bit easier. But uh, at the time of this recording, there's some snow. So I open this thing up here and it says, uh, here we go, 75 below zero. Let's look for some quotes. So it's cold in some places around the country. And I'm gonna show you some of these. Here we go. Uh, for this one, New Yorkers. So local, or I said, you know, they like local, should plan for hazardous travel. Ooh, hazardous travel, bold action words. Uh, there's some conflict there. Uh, emotion, I, I'm, I'm nervous about traveling. During the evening commute, I don't even need to read the rest of it. That's why it was chosen. That's why, this is what makes it irresistible and makes them say, I want that quote. Out of everything you say to a reporter, only certain answers make it in. And this is why, this is why. And I show you, this is how to be amazing in interviews. I actually just posted on Facebook today. It's eight years since I did an interview about Charlie Sheen when he was winning. Remember that? Winning. And my soundbite that I used in the interview, I said, this is before he started calling himself a rock star. I said, listen, this guy thinks he's a rock star. When it comes to sex, drugs, rock and roll, wine, women, and song, the only thing he's missing is a guitar. And they loved it. And that's part of what got me on it was TV. They, I said it in the, in the beforehand and they were like, oh, I'll say that during the interview. They loved it because pop culture references, uh, it's uh, entertaining. Now it doesn't have to have every one of these elements, but these are some of them. New Yorkers, let's see, should plan. Oh, we, uh, I think we read that one already. Here we go. This intense burst, bold action words, of snowfall combined with strong winds. So these were into facts. So two elements, I already know why out of everything this person, these people said, why it was chosen. This one's an absolute. Check your flight status with the carrier. Stay safe and warm, people. Um, and stay safe and warm kind of sounds like a cliche and you'd be surprised. You know, we've all been told never to write cliches. Well, when you, use cliches on the way to making a point, chances are your quote will be used. Let's see here. 
The procedure for running water is to open one faucet. So this is facts and details of how to not have your pipes frozen. Uh, extreme weather conditions. Whoa, extreme. Bold action words. Um, uh, emotion. Uh, abundance of caution. We want an abundance of caution. So you're starting to see some of the patterns here. You can use these, these elements that I'm sharing with you. Uh, and let's see here. Um, consider avoiding. This one is a little wishy-washy and still made it in, but usually if you own your words and it's an absolute, consider avoiding or delaying travel until it, uh, the snow squall passes your location. Um, and we had one or two other ones that were floating around in here. I thought I saw a pop culture reference, um, which was uh, in here. And you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of these here, um, which will, and I'm just looking for people being quoted. So you get the idea here. Um, that, when you use this in your pitch, they're saying, oh man, I wish this person would say it in the interview. And when you use it in your interview, they think you're an amazing guest and you get asked back. So I gave you many of the techniques uh, and I made sure to, to really give you something extra special today, which is how to break through. And if I just told you this about the sound bites and said, look, notice these patterns, You'd say, that's nice, but you wouldn't know how it would get you more press. It really works together with the template and all of that. So that is what you should run with. I hope you wrote down some of your hooks today. I hope that you can take action on this. And what is very uh, a big deal, I've never released something at this price ever because my stuff, I do a lot of corporate work and it is... Um, not cheap for them to work with me. And you now have an opportunity and I'm just gonna bring this thing up right here so that you can see it. And uh, basically what we have here is if you go to, let's see if I have the actual, there it is, mediareadyand30.com slash soundbites. Uh, you can have a little walkthrough video. I basically walked, it, walked you through it during this conversation that we had together and uh, some of the other questions, I just want to give you some of the other questions that came up when we did the live version a little bit earlier because we uh, ran a little extra and I was able to tighten it up today. Um, basically, we had some questions on just what are some of the biggest mistakes people make. Those are mistakes like not getting to the point, um, not being frequent enough with sending out the email pitches, not having a first name, not using sound bites in your pitch, not having bullets on what you would say. So when you go out, you got to be amazing. So first 20 people are going to get not 50, but they're going to get 100 of my best media contacts. Go over there, go fast. And I look forward to seeing you next time, hopefully in person. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.